Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi. We continue with our topic of discussion, chlorine and its compounds. And today we are discussing the second chemical property of chlorine. And this is reaction with metals. Uh, metals react with chlorine gas to form their respective metal chlorides. Uh, metal chlorides are salts. Uh, remember from uh, our knowledge of Form 2 work, chlorine is a halogen. And we know that halogens are salt manufacturers. So in this case, we find that uh, when chlorine gas reacts with metals, then we form the respective metal chlorides, which are basically salts. So we are going to uh, discuss a number of metals and see how they react with chlorine, uh, starting with magnesium. And we'll say that when a burning magnesium uh, ribbon is lowered into a gas jar containing chlorine gas, it burns with a bright white flame. So the magnesium lowered into a gas jar containing uh, the gas containing chlorine gas, let's insert that, it burns with a bright white flame forming a white solid, forming a white solid. And we can say that the white solid is magnesium chloride, is magnesium chloride. So basically, we are saying that magnesium, when it's burning, it's lowered into a gas jar containing chlorine gas. It burns with a bright white flame. And then the final product is a white solid. And that white solid is magnesium chloride. We know that magnesium chloride is a salt. So, magnesium chloride, which is a white solid, is formed. So, that equation does not need any further balancing. Um, so, we leave it at that. So, another example, we are, we are also going to say that uh, chlorine also reacts with hot iron, hot iron metal as shown in the diagram below. So we'll have a diagram to illustrate that. Uh, <clears throat> so the diagram shows how chlorine reacts with hot iron metal. We have dry chlorine gas from a generator. The chlorine gas must be dry at this point. And uh, the iron wire should be hot even before chlorine is delivered to make sure that uh, uh, 
the hot iron wire reacts with chlorine and when they react they form iron 3 chloride which is a uh, which sublimes on heating and when it sublimes on heating changes into a gas and then cools in the flask to form a sublimate so we have a black iron 3 chloride sublimate being collected in the in the in the in the flask the excess uh, chlorine gas is then passed through anhydrous calcium chloride which is a drying agent and then it is taken to the fume chamber then it is taken to the fume chamber remember chlorine is a highly poisonous gas and that's why the excess of it should be taken to the fume chamber the anhydrous calcium chloride prevents moisture from getting into into the into the flask because it's a drying agent so basically what you are saying is that uh, uh, there is iron metal the hot iron wire uh, combining with chlorine gas which must be dry to form iron 3 uh, chloride which is a black solid or is a black sublimate on cooling it collects in the cooler parts of the flask so to balance that equation uh, we have uh, three two two and that uh, equation is balanced so we are saying that uh, anhydrous calcium chloride absorbs moisture and prevents it from getting into the flask prevents the moisture from getting into the flask uh, we can also use anhydrous calcium oxide which is able to absorb the chlorine gas uh, before it goes to the atmosphere because chlorine gas is a pollutant and if you use anhydrous calcium oxide which is a base it's able to absorb chlorine gas so you can say that anhydrous calcium oxide can also be used because it absorbs chlorine gas it absorbs chlorine gas hence preventing atmospheric pollution hence preventing atmospheric pollution so we are going to have an assignment on this So the first question, write a balanced chemical equation for A, reaction of chlorine with magnesium, B, reaction of chlorine with iron, then number two, explain why anhydrous calcium chloride is used in the experiment above. So we're going to stop there and continue from there next time. Goodbye. Thank you.